Hey everybody. I have spent about the last 10 days setting up a little demonstration here. Uh, this isn't going to be anything groundbreaking, but I've talked to a few people recently and we've been discussing tannins in your tank and the effect they have and uh, just to throw my thoughts out there, my experiences, I have allowed this tank to accumulate tannin for about 10 days now. It's a very long time for me to go without a water change on this tank. Um, and that actually proves a few points. Uh, one is I've been keeping an eye on my nitrates. I never normally let my tank go anywhere near this long without any water change at all. Um, and my nitrates are actually lower than I expected them to be. I'm still sitting right around 40 to 50 parts per million, somewhere in there. Um, that's about as high as I like to let it get, but I am still within my acceptable range. I'm not uh, doing this water change because I feel that it's absolutely necessary in that regard. Um, I do have other reasons, and I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is after 10 days without any water change whatsoever, and with the amount of tannin that has leached into this tank in the course of that 10 days, um, my pH has not shifted at all. It is rock solid stable at 7.3 and I will talk a little more about that uh, as the video progresses. So 10 days with pretty much zero maintenance and the water is very tannin stained as you will see um, in the before and after at the end of the video. Uh, you'll see a dramatic difference in how clear the water looks but clear and dirty are not the same thing and that's one of the things I want to make uh, very clear, no pun intended, uh, in this video. The tannins in your water are organic compounds, but they are not necessarily pollutants in the way nitrates and what you would typically think of as organics. Um, organics is another word that is used um, way too much and not really understood. Organics really just breaks down into anything that's carbon-based. So that's a pretty broad range of things that are organic. Um, and the tannins in your tank are not bad. The only issue you can run into with tannins, and again I will get into this as the video progresses, is that your pH may lower in your tank. Um, it's unlikely, it's not as um, dramatic as a lot of people seem to think it is, and that is what I want to discuss and that's actually why I'm doing this video, almost in specifically. Uh, another thing I'd like to discuss in this video is the reason I'm actually doing this water change now and not letting the tannins continue to build. As you can probably imagine, I have quite a bit of uh, dead zones here and there in this tank where fish waste and other things um, accumulate. So I need to get in there basically to do a good vac and get the loose debris that's off the bottom. Uh, I know you can't really see it at the moment, but when I see the fish kick up from behind a rock or something, uh, the amount of waste that swirls up into the water column is disturbing to me. So I really need to get in there and do a good vac, and that'll all be part of the video too, I'm sure. Um, I'll, I'll chop it all together so that it's not, you know, way too long. And we will see how dramatic the transformation in this tank goes. Now, the other point I wanted to make on the debris and the detritus uh, accumulating in the bottom of the tank is largely due to, well, two things. One is my huge... Um, stocking density that I have in this tank. My, my tanks are all very, very heavily stocked. Um, and then the other aspect is the water circulation. I do not have enough water circulation in here. Now this is an angelfish tank and this is probably going to sound like a ridiculously high number but it in fact is too low. I need very much more water circulation to reduce the amount of dead zones I have in here. This tank actually has 1400 gallons per hour circulating through it. That's between the two pumps, or the two uh, filters, I should say. And then I have this power head here that's 850 gallons an hour uh, by itself. And I will go into more detail, maybe not in this video, but I will do a video about water circulation, um, dissolved gases, dead zones, dead spots, things like that in the tank uh, at some other point. So today, despite my 1,400 gallons an hour circulation, the dead zones in this tank, which are many, uh, have accumulated too much debris for me, so I gotta get it out of there. It's driving me crazy. And uh, so today's gonna be the big day. 
So let's go ahead and get started. This isn't going to be anything super complicated, just a basic water change, wipe the glass down, uh, and change out the filters. And I just want you to see the difference between the really tannin stained water and the nice, crisp, clear, clean water when we're at the other end of this video. So sit tight, let me get started, and we'll get to the next step. All right, everybody, I got the tank drained. I'm now beginning to refill it. And I'm going to spare you all the water change monotony. We all know how to do a water change, so we're just going to go ahead and get right to the after. But first, I want to show you this real quick. Uh, earlier I mentioned my pH and the stability of my pH and the tannins and the effect they have on them. So I had 10 days of tannins building up and the water in the vial to the left is water from my source, my tap water, my highly treated tap water, uh, which is at the pH of 7.3, right where I want it. The vial on the right is actually from my tank, and that pH is 7.2, 7.0. It's somewhere sitting right around neutral. So after 10 days of those tannins building up in my tank, with my moderately soft water, I did see a slight reduction in pH. But you can see how similar uh, my source water to the left versus my 10-day-old tank water with all those tannins in it is to the right. So very little reduction in um, pH. But again, that is because I have um, a decent amount of carbonate hardness, which we will get into in a moment. This test is my nitrate test. Let me do this without spilling it. I know it's a little hard to tell here. Um, we are somewhere between 40 and 80. And if I had to be honest, I'd say we're probably leaning a little closer to the 80 end. So maybe a little around 60-ish, something like that. So the uh, nitrates are getting up there. Again, this was 10 days with no water change. I did change the filters a couple times during that 10 days, but I did not actually change the uh, water at all. So there you have it. That's my water chemistry. And now we will go ahead and look at the uh, effects of the water change and we will see the after. Okay, everybody, that is quite a difference, is it not? Now, what that showed me was that even though this wood has been in this water for over a year now, uh, and the uh, branch itself I actually pulled out of the muck at the bottom of a stream, so I have no idea how long it was actually underwater before I got it. So after all this time, it still leaches a considerable amount of tannins into the water. Um, now addressing the issue of tannins and pH, the reason the tannins lower your pH is because tannins are really nothing more than tannic acid and you add acid to your tank it will lower your pH. Um, that only really has an impact on your tank if you've got very soft water. Uh, we just saw by looking at my um, pH measurements that despite the length of time and the amount of tannins that I let build up in that tank, uh, my pH shifted very, very little. And that's because I have a carbonate hardness of about four and a general hardness of about two to three. So even at that level of softness, I still have enough buffering capacity to deal with that small amount of tannic acid in the tank. Uh, the chief concern that I was worried about was the nitrates building up. They were a little higher than I was expecting them to be. I checked the day before yesterday and they were right around 40. Um, so they did jump considerably. Now, that's not unexpected after I've given that some thought either. If you stay on top of your water changes and you pull the physical debris out of the tank, um, you'll prevent it from ever breaking down into nitrates and that's one of the reasons I do frequent water changes and frequent filter changes is because it takes time for these things to break down and deteriorate into your tank water. It's one thing to pull fish waste out 
uh, when you leave it there, it's broken down and it's now releasing things into your water that are eventually breaking down and ending up as, as um, dissolved solids, nitrates, uh, and other nasty organics that you don't want in there. Um, so that's why we were really starting to get to the point where we were shifting. And I think if I had let it go a few more days, we would have seen the nitrates um, beginning to climb dramatically. Now, fortunately, I never let my tanks go very long without doing a water change. Um, but that was an interesting little um, discovery of mine, I guess I could call it, uh, seeing how much my nitrates really did increase over the last couple of days. Now, that also brings me to my issue of water circulation. When I said 1,400 gallons per hour earlier, that is nominal. That is just what my uh, filters and power head and everything is listed as. Uh, as soon as the filters begin to get a little bit dirty, that's you're reducing the amount that's actually flowing and so on and so forth. So I probably don't actually have, I know I don't actually have, in fact, um, the full 1,400 gallons per hour circulating through this tank. But if this was a bare glass bottom tank, that would be a tremendous amount of water flow through this tank. Uh, as you can see, I have quite a bit of um, stuff in the tank, and all of that breaks up the water flow and diffuses it and even directs it and I'll get into that when I do you know a little more in depth about water flow and, and water current and things like that um, but just think about it the difference between standing in a field versus standing in a group of trees when the winds blowing if you're in the trees the wind just gets broken up and you just don't really feel the breeze blowing on you and the same thing is happening in this tank the way I have my uh, power head directed and the way I have my um, filter discharges it does not create enough current to disturb even angelfish that like very calm water um, and yet I'm moving a lot of water around the tank and that helps in my filtration it helps prevent uh, the debris from settling on the bottom so despite the 10 day period despite the heavy stock load that's in this tank um, and no water changes at all, just a couple of filter changes over the period of 10 days. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of shift in anything in the tank. So what you really are seeing is a difference in the coloration in the tank. And that's really the main point of this, is you don't need to really get too worried when you see tannins building up in the tank, unless, again, if you have very soft water. And I would imagine anybody out there that deals with very soft water already knows that very soft water is is you know touchy it can crash very easily um, so I'm assuming you're on top of that sort of thing if you've got even a couple of degrees of hardness um, you should be okay with tannins building up in your tank if you're done your weekly water changes you shouldn't have anything to worry about either tannins or nitrates building up in your tank um, I do soak my wood for a couple of days maybe two to three days before I actually put it in the tank uh, especially if it's new and it comes from a store or something like that. It's been quite a while since I've done that. But if you do, um, really give that a good soaking. And when you think about it, just dump the water out and pour some really good hot tap water on it and let it sit overnight. Um, if you've got chlorine in your tap water, dechlorinate it first. Don't let the chlorine soak into the wood. Uh, don't ever put chlorine or bleach on anything that's porous. So that, in a nutshell, is my little demonstration on removing tannins from the tank and allowing them to build up, etc. So I hope that uh, maybe made things a little bit clearer about how tannins will reduce your pH, but not dramatically and not very quickly. So don't uh, worry about it, and also don't think about it as some miracle cure that you're going to lower your pH suddenly by putting a little bit of drift water, a little bit of peat in your filter box, because that's probably not going to happen. So thanks again for watching, I hope I didn't bore you, and please like and please subscribe, stay tuned, there will be more to come.